What's up guys, this is phase one once again. Uh, today I'm going to be doing a track breakdown of my song called Hanging by a Thread featuring Mika Martin. So as you can tell, it's very much a, uh, you know, it's kind of like a rock song and there's also like an EDM section. This is how I work in pretty much all my projects. I have a drum, a drum group and a sidechain group. So that's literally everything that gets sidechained but drums. And within that group, there are many, many other groups, um, all color coded very beautifully, as you can see. So let's I'll start from the beginning. I'm just gonna go through all the different like sections and go through all the different parts, talk about unique things about each. So the intro is just a guitar and a little vocal chop thing. So first of all, let's go into this. This is a plugin that I use um, pretty much all the time. I use this in most songs. Um, it's called Heavy Seven Strings, Heavier Seven Strings. Uh, the guy from Dirty Phonics actually got me onto this. Um, a bit of a game changer. Um, so let's, let me unfreeze this. I just uh, froze everything for CPU sake. The plugin, it looks like this. And it's like this metal looking guitar. And uh, whenever you, like you draw the MIDI in as so, and then you can see it playing like on the guitar as like, it would on the guitar, it's, it's crazy. And there's like a whole, whole bunch of different parameters and stuff on this. Um, I've kind of delved pretty deep, deep into this to make you know some pretty cool sounds and uh, just kind of learning it because like basically your way through it, like every every single, uh, every single, like you, you can change the palm muting by using like a different MIDI parameter or you can change the, uh, you can change whether there's like a seventh being played with the note just using different MIDI parameters. So like you go into um, the MIDI itself and you go, basically every, every single one of these changes something different. So like uh, for example, uh, the modulation is changing how, how much palm muting the guitar is doing. Um, so I've got this solo, so let's, let's just listen. You can, you'll see it play as it happens. So when it comes to that down here, it'll be less palm muted. So that's more, that's less. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a really cool plugin. Lots of different uh, things you can do with it. There's lots of different cool presets you can check out. I highly recommend it. I use it in most songs. Um, obviously you'd like do like a lot of like live guitars as well, but like sometimes it's cool to like mix them up and like combine them and uh, blend them. Um, <clears throat> so that's kind of like this intro little section, it's just a little riff, which also has this main theme, um, this main melody from the whole song basically. I basically, this whole melody basically goes from the start of the song to the very end of the song. Uh, super, super basic. Um, I came up with it just from chopping up the, the vocals from Mika Martin. And that, that little riff literally goes the entire song. Um, Cause it's, one, it's catchy and two, it, it sounds cool. Um, I did some interesting processing on this. Let me go to a section where it's, yeah, you can hear it here. So this is literally just uh, MIDI. Uh, I chopped up the vocals just using MIDI uh, slices. Um, <clears throat> pretty basic stuff, but then, uh, there's a whole bunch of processing on it. So let me take uh, all this stuff off. Gosh, it's gonna sound really bare. Actually, let me do this. Let me group this shit. All right, so by itself, it just sounds like this. It's just a bunch of like vocal 
tones chopped up into like some sort of melody. Um, so when we put my processing on, which is just a bunch of OTT, some saturation, um, this little Alter Boy uh, plugin basically just adds like um, different formats and pitches. I think I've, what, what have I got going on here? It's just okay. So I've got like like twenty five percent of like minus uh, an octave, just, just just for some low end. Um, some EQ. Uh, what else is there? Nothing too crazy. Uh, the main characteristic of this uh, sound is coming from this cool synth I found, found called Vocal Synth. Uh, so let's turn that on and open it. It's just one of the presets I used. Um, I mean, I made this song like a year ago, so I don't know what I used. But um, one of the presets from it, it makes it sound like this as opposed to this. It was pretty cool. Makes it sound more synth. Sounds more synth. There's some like, like effects on there. There's some obviously like delay and stuff like that. So I just use that. Highly recommend. Um, so yeah, that, that particular sound like literally lasts the entire song. The only the, the only thing that happens to that uh, sound is there's some low passing in uh, at times, as you can see throughout this automation. Like parts of the song, parts of the song, it's low passed sorry, high pass, uh, to allow room for the vocals and obviously the drops, it's more brighter. So like you want to add some, add some more high end to that. Um, so that's the main riff, I guess, um, throughout the, uh, throughout the, the bigger sections that is also layered this, that same melody that the vocals are doing. I've, added multiple uh, different layers to that to accentuate that sound. Um, for example, the same melody I made in Serum. Uh, where is it? That's the vocal. This project is very all over the place. I do apologize. There was no real, wait, this might be it. Nope. Um, So yeah, this is the same kind of melody with the guitar as well. So that and the vocals together like work beautifully. And there's, there's also a synth uh, somewhere doing the same melody and that all ties together beautifully for the, the drop, I guess. Like if you want to call it a drop, it's like, it's like super, super poppy. Um, this is it. Wait, that's, oh, that's not it. Motherfucker. I know it's in it somewhere. There it is. There's a serum. Um, this is the serum uh, version of that melody. So that's literally super... That's like a nothing patch. It's just like... Uh, it's just a square, square wave and a saw wave at the same time with like a bit of like low passing and it's probably got a bit of distortion on it probably. Yeah, some OTT and some saturation just to brighten it up. Um, nothing too crazy. But yeah, that's kind of the main theme of the song. Um, so then let's get into the next section. This song, this song is uh, this song is definitely more like radio friendly, Spotify friendly. Because uh, currently we're in quarantine, so um, you know like we're not really writing music for the club right now. We're writing music for you know people at home listening. So like you know, I think this is a a good uh, example of like what a lot of producers are doing right now is like ready, writing more like structured songs like um for example like this song is very much verse chorus verse chorus kind of like style of like you know music rather than just like build up drop build up drop you know it's it's a very very different uh style of to what like most dubstep producers would produce but um you know if you've been a fan for a while you know i do i do a lot of like you know metal stuff and 
So this is kind of cool to do something a little bit more like melodic, poppy. It's still got that like rock, like, you know, tinge to it, which is good. Um, so yeah, the, the verse is just, uh, let me go to the vocals because Mika Martin crushed this vocal. Um, basically this song was around for a while and I tried to find a vocalist and we went through like five different bands a whole bunch of vocalists and like nothing really came back that we were happy with and then I discovered Mika Martin who I had never really had, had heard of before and then I sent him the tune and like within like an hour he sent me back this vocal I was just like where have you been all my life <laughs> like, so yeah really cool um if you haven't heard the song like he's he's got some crazy vocals like it definitely carries the song like without the vocals like it would just be like this boring beat but like this glues it all in together so his vocals crazy and the crazy thing is like he did most of the processing on the vocals so i didn't really have to do a whole lot i think what did i do to it i just added like a tiny bit of reverb in sections just for some to draw it out and like a bit of like uh low passing high passing um but yeah like check this shit out hello to the truth i see lies that follow you tearing you inside out crazy um the, like there, there are a whole lot of like extra things i did to it like um uh, like what I do with most vocals is before there's any like first like note or like uh, articulation in the vocal I'll grab that tiny little like word or you know half a word and make that separate and uh, turn it into like this long drawn out reverb which is what this is and you'll hear it I think I'm pretty sure I did a tutorial in this like a year ago And that's literally just the first word of this verse. Hello, hello. hello. So like when you tie it together, it sounds, it makes the song sound, you know, more tied together. Hello to the and I pretty much do that with like most first words or like things leading to a new section kind of thing. Um, yeah, so all you do is just like grab the first little articulation of the word and you turn that into like this big drawn out thing of just by um, you take the sample put a reverb on it with like I don't know 10 15 seconds of reverb on it and then freeze it and then you get that and you, re you reverse it again so you get like the reverse kind of vocal so that's a cool cool little tool to use there's another little one here what's that oh, great way to make you sound like a cool producer yeah, there's a whole bunch of that stuff going on. Um, let's have a look at the next section. Um, wait. Hello to the so in that section, the guitar, Hello. in this verse, the guitar. Hello to the, truth, I see. the guitar is pretty constant. Uh, the next thing that comes in here is the drums. It's pretty, it's, it's pretty much like live drums. Like I tried to keep, I tried to keep it very like rock sounding rather than like EDM, just for the different variations. And that's what I do as well. So um, uh, what do we got here? So here we've got a bass guitar, which is the same plugin I was talking about before, the heavier seven strings. Um, it's just like a bass guitar version of it. So this is it. It sounds. I don't, know, I don't know if, like, to me, it sounds like a, sounds like a bass guitar, like... Sounds pretty legit to me. Um, so that is also layered with some actual recorded bass guitar, which I've just kind of used, like, the higher mid-range uh, characteristics of that, because that was, this was kind of carrying most of it. I think I actually recorded that first, and then once discovering that plugin, then I added that as well. So it's kind of layered. So there's two bass guitars there. 
Um, but even that bass guitar is still high pass um, just after 100 hertz because I it's still EDM. So I added a sub in there. Wow. Yeah. So that sub there is, uh, you know, you don't normally get subs in rock music, so, but this is EDM, so I've added this sub underneath it uh, just to fill out the sound, and it works great. Um, that's just a guitar, same guitar. What's this one? It's like a heavier version of that same sound underneath it all. And uh, what's this? Oh. I've also, I've also got an, a serum patch doing the same melody as well. That's kind of cool, I guess. Uh, what is it? Just, just a saw wave. Yeah, just the init patch. Cool. Nothing crazy. Um, what else is in this section? The dr Let's talk about the drums for a sec, because people often uh, hit me up about my drums. And it's not that crazy, really. I mean, like... Before I before I was producing EDM, I was like producing my my bands and my friends' bands and uh, things like that. Uh, so I've kind of done things pretty old school when it comes to like uh, production. Like a lot of producers these days will like import their um, drums into like a MIDI sampler or whatever. Um, but I I do things pretty old school. I keep everything audio based, so I can see. I can it's very visual. I can see it rather than just you know, hoping for the best with MIDI. So like, here's a, here's a kick. You can see it, you know what I mean? Like, uh, all, all, all these, all the samples I use, I, I've basically created like my own, my own like drum kit. So like, it's, it's just like individual samples, like, but like, it's just like a, a kit that sounds pretty realistic. Um, even though it's not, they're all just like, they're all just one shot samples, but I, mess with them very delicately to make it sound pretty real like um let's play the group let's play the group by itself let's see what it sounds like wait no okay this does not have one group this is like multiple groups all right there's there's drums there's cymbals let's solo that some hats as well apparently uh, and some toms cool so we play all those together we'll just get like a good understanding of the phase one kit. Yeah, you kind of get the point. Uh, let's go to the chorus, let's have, see if that's any different. Yeah, oh, yeah. So that's kind of um, there's, there's nothing too crazy about my drums. Like it's, I think it's, it's all about finding like the right sample. You know, like uh, like most of these samples are ones I've recorded myself in the years, or just like random ones I've found and like processed to make sound better. Um, so like when you have a look at the actual uh, the actual channel, like there's really not there's really no uh, processing at all. Like all I've done is EQ it a bit. You know what I mean? Like the snare. Uh, the snare by itself, it's pretty basic. Um, there's like a bit of reverb on it, a bit of EQ. Um, the uh, I tend to group and group my drums. Um, just like I'll, I'll have like a, a transient. I'll have a transient group. So like on the transient group, I add like a bit of a transient master, which basically just uh, well, there's not much on there at all. But usually I'll kind of increase it to like, I don't know, twenty percent. It just adds like this extra like punch to the drums. So I've got like my transient group, which is basically just drum, like kick and snare. And then I'll have another group for cymbals, which is just once again, it's just everything is high pass because you need to allow room for everything else. Uh, same as that. 
toms, I kind of, I, I, I add a bit of transient to that as well. Probably a lot more than, yeah, it's like 46% transient on that one. Um, this transient bus is great. I use it like uh, for all my drums. Uh, obviously, obviously every, every tune differentiates. So like some tunes you can increase it a lot depending how punchy you want it to be. Um, yeah, all, all it does is kind of just like increase the attack of the, uh, the sound. Um, so it's perfect for drums. Sometimes, some, sometimes you could put it on bass sounds, like really hard hitting ones, but generally just drums I use it for. Um, let's have a look. What else is going on here? Yeah, so here um, I've got my main snare, and then for the, you know, for the, you know, the diehard drummers, I've, I've added all like the the ghost notes, which is just like the offbeat kind of like subtle notes. It's like super subtle in the mix. It sounds loud there, but it's actually not. Like, let's play the let's play the song here. Um, I got some like tail re uh, snares here, so it's just like the end of a the snare with like lots of reverb. That's just for mix down purposes, just to kind of fill out, make it sound like a more like realistic drum kit because it's not a realistic, it's not a real drum kit. So the more you can make it sound real, the better. Some uh, hats here. They were just like recorded overheads that I've had for a billion years. This is my favorite china. I'm, I may give that china away one day, but like it's it's very dear to me. Um, I'm probably doing a sample pack towards the end of this year, 2020. So I might I might include that there if you're lucky. Um, <clears throat> all right, I'm kind of blabbering on. So this project is very all over the place because I kind of, I didn't write the song, it, it just kind of happened. Um, so like there's weird side chaining, routing and everything all over the place. So I haven't touched this in a while, so I kind of remember what I did. Um, there's, there's a few effects under there. Uh, what do we got? Nope, the virtual right, classic riser. It's a great one to use, great one. Shout out, shout out Val. Um, <clears throat> Alright, so let's let's get to the, the drop. Um, So a lot of stuff in here I've I've had to um, bounce down into audio because there was like I think it had like f 30 like VSTs open like 30 30 instances of serum and I was the, the whole CPU couldn't handle it so I had to bounce a lot of things down into audio which is fine because like basic thing is like a saw you know it's that's fine um, there's still a few serums open what's this. Like that doesn't need to be there. Like that doesn't need to be there. Like, I can even delete it. We don't even need that. Like it's you can't even hear it. We don't even need it. Fuck it. Let's delete it. Fuck it. <laughs> it's in. It's in. It's in the. <laughs> it's in the actual song. But like you know, it doesn't need to be there. Fuck it. Am I allowed to swear on this? Yes. Oh yeah, so this this sub that was carrying out the uh, the verse. Uh, wait, no, this is this is also uh, frozen. It originally had a, a Redux on it just for some you know weird pixelated distortion, and then it's high passed here. So I'm just getting that those weird artifacts. I like them. I don't know. It's probably not a good thing in actual audio engineering world, but. I like that. And that's laid with a sub, a proper sub. 
because it sounds nice. Yeah, and then there's some saws there. Um, what else is in the section? Just a fucking hi hat, dude. Um, so I did some more chopping here with Mika's vocals for the for the drop. Um, what's actually on there? It's a bit of reverb, a bit of redux, which you're getting that weird pixelated sound from. Yeah, it's, just, it's basically just his vocals, which I've kind of stretched and dragged out just to create some tones sitting behind like the the big uh, super saws and stuff. I think this one, what's this one? Yeah, just screams, which I've like pitched down into like some sort of melody, I guess. But yeah, if you listen out for these vocals in the background of the song, Just kind of adds like another layer to the song, kind of ties it together a bit before like the actual vocals come back in for the second half of the drop. Um, once again, yeah, there's that, there's that riff that just keeps going through the entire song. Fucking repetitive, dude. It's crazy. <laughs> uh, what's this one? Yeah, that's just like a fucking saw wave or something. What's that? Yeah, just fucking basic shapes, dude, all the way. Most of my sounds are made just through basic shapes. Like, you know, the more, the more like post-process you can do is the better. I mean, this is a, you know, this song was not very like bass growly song, but like normally, yeah, you, you, you can make most sounds just from using like the basic uh, shapes patch. Um, what's this? Some noise? Yeah. Fuck yeah. Some effects in the background. Cool. Some twinkles in there too. Pretty. So pretty. Anyway, that, that's the uh, that's the chorus. Yeah, so that's kind of it really. Um, then there's like a second verse, which is the same shit with different vocals and a few extra drum things. Um, there's another chorus. Let's have a look at this. Um, where is it? This one. So this is the main guitar for the, uh, for the chorus. Nice and heavy. What, let me unfreeze this so you can have a look at it. Unfreeze. Wait, it is unfrozen. I'm an idiot. So once again, it's all the midis just drawn in. And it sounds like a pretty fucking legit guitar, dude. I don't know. Some people would argue, some, you know, guitar professionals would be like, that's not a real guitar. But, um, who gives a fuck, dude? It's EDM. Yeah, it's all just drawn in like with MIDI. The second drop is kind of double, t uh, well, it's kind of just normal time. The first drop is like half time, but yeah, second drop is made a bit more jumpier. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of channels in this project, so it, it, uh, my CPU does not enjoy it. But yeah, that's kind of the gist. Um, what else? I'm just trying to think if there's anything crazy going on that I haven't mentioned. What's this? Oh yeah. 
Some plucky boys. Just a serum patch. What is that? Oh, I think this is. I think this is a virtual riot preset. Yeah, it totally is. It's just a. Uh, yeah, this is like a synth. It's like a, 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 like a. I think it's a super soul that he made, but I've just turned it into like little plucks. Pretty crazy, man. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much the song, man. I don't know. Um, the 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 drop drums I've got uh, separated. Um, what I do these days, like obviously, like loudness war is like a crazy thing. Um, so like the louder you can, the louder you can get your sounds, the better. These days, I tend I tend to add like a tiny little transient, like this thing here. So I've got my kick, but I've also got like a little transient, just doing like the very tiny little beginning of the sound, just for the extra click. It literally sounds like this. So whenever there's like a kick and snare, I just add that to it. Um, it's like, it doesn't really fuck with anything. Like people, you know, are concerned about like phasing and all that, but it's literally like 0 0.000 of a second. It's not even noticeable. It, it just adds like this tiny little click to your transient. And um, I know, I've noticed a lot of pe other people doing that recently too. So this is the kick by itself cool kick and then you add the transient to it it's pretty subtle but in when it comes to like the, the entire mix down like these little like details definitely make a difference especially you know you know when you're trying to like make a make a song for like a big system so um that's a little cool thing um let's play this track let's play this group by itself Yep. Wait, where's my... <clears throat> yeah, so basically I have that group. The way I generally work is I have the uh, drum group going straight to the master, <clears throat> and then all the stuff is side-chained. <clears throat> to side-chain, I use a little thing called volume shaper, uh, and most people use this for like shaping sounds and stuff, but I use this for side chaining. So basically, uh, I've got like a little trigger, MIDI trigger. So whenever, whenever like there's a MIDI trigger, <coughs> it's basically these are basically on every uh, kick and snare. So whenever that happens, you it then ducks the sound um, from basically everything in the song except for the drums. So you can hear it if I play it. It's like a, it's a little duck in sound every time one of these MIDI notes hit, which is, which is standard practice for EDM, but a lot of people don't do this technique. A lot of people use like the Ableton comp compressor or things like that, but I use Volume Shaper and it's very effective because it's, uh, you can literally shape the way you, like you, you want the way it, it to duck. Like if I wanted like a big duck, I would, oops, let's not do that. If I wanted it like to duck like crazy, I could like do it like that. It's a bit drastic for this song. But um, yeah, I highly recommend doing it that way if you don't already. My master is pretty basic. I don't do much on the master. Um, bit of Fletcher Munchen, Munchen? Fletcher Munson EQ, just to take away some of that harshness. My ozone is super basic. Um, it's basically like a tiny bit of reverb to tie it all together at like, it's like 1%. Uh, there's a bit of, uh, harmonic excite, exciting on the, um, on the mids, just like a bit of, bit of distortion on the, the sides, on, on the sides, like the stereo width on the sides. Um, and also I've added like a bit of, um, width on these bands as well on the higher end and that's pretty much it and then like a tiny bit of eq on the um on the on the uh on the ozone but besides that i don't know that i don't normally do that why is that there ah, who cares sounds good 
and then all I add is like a clip shifter at the end just to cut it off. Like, like I think these days, especially for EDM music, like the the focus to get a track mastered, I think, is lesser than the you know the audio world or rock world. Like uh, you can just do all the mix down stuff in your in your track, and like as long as it sounds good through the master, that's all that matters, you know. So my master chain is super like nothing, you know. It, this would sound pretty much the same even without that. It would just be clipping, you know, a little bit on the master. So and that's why I use like clip shifter. Some people use like G clip, or you know, some people use like glue compressor. It doesn't really matter as long as you know as long as it sounds good to your ear and it's not like you know doing crazy distortion stuff in the end because at the end of the day it's like this is all this is the digital realm so you can really do whatever uh, but that's kind of the song I hope it gives you like a good idea of how I work and stuff like that so um, yeah this song is now out on Disciple it's called Hanging by a Thread featuring Mika Martin and I hope you enjoy it I hope you enjoyed the tutorial or the breakdown and I'll see you next time for another tutorial with phase one. Shout out Disciple. Let's, let's go. <laughs>